Good evening, guys. Afternoon. Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome back to the FPL Joe. Almost messed the intro up there because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we just watched. Like, I mean, I'm sure we're going to speak about FPL, but wow, what a week of, or what a day, I should say, of football. I mean, I think no one saw that coming today. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely a shock to the system, I think. I'm quite glad I'm a neutral fan in terms of uh, today's football because those results were unbelievable and there is a lot to talk about obviously especially with the Tata race being shaken up now from today's yeah. results yeah I'm sure we'll get into all of that we'll have time to discuss all the crazy games so um let's start off with my team on on the on the board um I haven't actually fully checked my rank and everything I, I, they're the updated ranks. I know I was on a small. It's very small. Red. I'm on a very small red, aren't I? I, I You're believe like a thousand or even a couple hundred. Mm. I think I should get um. I should get a uh, a green in the end, shouldn't I? Um, because obviously I've got yeah, but you still want the Chelsea to play. Yeah, let me. Sorry, I'm just gonna check something on my computer. Just bear with me for a moment. Okay, yeah, let's let's go. So, um, let's start off with my team. Um, in goal, um, as you guys know, Kelleher is my goalkeeper. However, I have done an auto sub because Kelleher didn't play um, in Liverpool's one 0 loss shock result. Obviously, we didn't realize Allison's gonna start today. Allison comes on. We hear leaks. Allison's gonna start, and yeah, Allison's back, and obviously Kelleher drops to the bench. So Petrovic, Monday night against Everton at home. Uh, interested to see how he does. Into the back three. Um, Gusto, again, he plays tomorrow night. So I do have triple Chelsea for tomorrow, which I am quite excited about because I'm one point away from a green. So I should get a green arrow tomorrow. Um, unless, you know, a lot. I don't think Palmer is that heavily captain. So it should be a green regardless. So we'll see what Gusto does. Moving on to Gabriel. Now, obviously, we didn't see that coming result um Arsenal have just lost uh two nil uh, against Aston Villa and uh especially in the second half I thought Villa were brilliant and caused Arsenal quite a few problems I mean I think Villa were quite um unlucky not to score more you know they hit the crossbar Watkins hit the post the Gabriel made a bit of an error for he Gabriel picked up a yellow card uh, so he ends up on zero points um which was a bit frustrating when you look at my bench obviously Dan Burns six pointer on the bench Van Heck did concede uh, unfortunately, in the in the draw, I believe one one to Burnley, wasn't it? Um, yeah, which was which was quite frustrating. Uh, obviously, um, one one away away draw for Brighton. Um, moving into the midfield five now, just shocking, really. Um, I mean, Jordan, it seems like yeah. you might have got potentially got captaincy right. I mean, we'll talk about Haaland in a sec, but in terms of the other midfielders, the big ones, you know, Son, Son comes over with a blank. Uh, against Newcastle away. Now, I wasn't confident for this game for Son. It is a tricky game. Newcastle seems to have picked up a bit of form. Um, obviously, Isaac doing really well in that one. Gordon as well. Uh, but yeah, Son comes away with one point after he was subbed just before the hour mark as well. So very disappointing for Son owners, I think, this, this game week. Salah. Where do we start with Liverpool? Obviously, Liverpool also involved in a shock result, as I said, as, alongside Arsenal. Uh, Liverpool losing 1-0 uh, at home to... Palace, um, and in a game, obviously, a, a, a lot of chances missed. I don't know if anyone watched the game, but Nunes, Jota, even Salah, guilt edge opportunities missed. Uh, just, just downright bad finishing. Um, and Salah comes away with two points. Um, yeah, it's disappointing. Obviously, if you're watching it as a, as a Liverpool fan, um, yeah, it's just one of those games where Liverpool just couldn't finish. They had a countless of opportunities, it didn't go in for them. Um, for those that have watched the game, you probably, I think Liverpool's XG was like 3.3 or something like that. So it's a bit mad, but yeah, Salah comes away with the two uh, points with the, with the blank. And Saka matches him pretty much. Um, Saka again, uh, I watched obviously the whole second half. I watched bits of the first half. I think I caught like from 30 minutes onwards and um, I didn't think Saka was too involved today. I didn't think he had a great game. 
Um, didn't really have any shots on target or anything from what I remember, especially in the second half. I thought he was anonymous. Uh, wasn't really involved in any of the chance or anything. So, yeah, Saka comes over the two points as well. Palmer, uh, we'll talk about Palmer tomorrow, obviously, next stream because he plays tomorrow night against Everton at home. I think could be a good game for him. I've got a triple Chelsea, so I am relying on Chelsea to sort of turn in my week into a good week. It's not really been a great week, this this FPL uh, game week so far. And then to complete the midfield, Garnacho. Now, as you guys know, I was debating whether to start Garnacho or Hoyland. Um, how many points did Darwin get? Darwin got two points, didn't he? Yeah, he got taken off um, yeah. during the game, but he didn't get anything before he came off. Yeah, so my transfer did sort of pay off because I took Darwin out to play Garnacho, and Garnacho got an assist somehow. He got four <laughs> points. Um, so I'll take that all day. Uh, but I was very frustrated to see that Garnacho was subbed somehow at half time, which yeah. I don't know why. And I don't watch the game, so what do you make yeah. of that? There's, I don't see the logic in that. I don't think ten. I don't know what Ten Hag was actually thinking. I know Ganacho was playing not the best football, but to be honest, no Man United player was playing the best football during that game. Mm. So taking off him completely got rid of that attack. Hoyden yeah. was non-existent again, and mm. even though Ganacho was bad, at least he assisted one of the goals for United, and I thought that's enough to keep him on the pitch. But apparently, in Ten Hag's eyes, it wasn't enough. Mm. Yeah, so that was strange, but I'm happy he got an assist at least. And um, I mean, Garnacho did like some comments on Twitter afterwards. So I don't know what that means for Garnacho going forward. Is he going to be a regular starter? Which we'll have to wait and see. And up front to complete the team, we've got Isaac and Haaland, the two big returners really in my team. Isaac, what a game from him. You know, comes away with two goals, I believe. Um, excellent finishes from Isaac. I mean, I'm quite unlucky. I feel like as an owner, he should have had a couple more. Uh, but, you know, yeah. 12 points, I won't complain too much. And he's been excellent since my game with 31 wildcard. Um, yeah. Bringing him in, you know, scoring every week. I've had him pretty much. So I do like Isaac. And, um, yeah, um, he won't be on my team in game week 34. So I am free hitting. But, yeah, he's been on good form. And then Haaland comes away with a goal and an assist in that game as well. Bit of a lucky assist. Um, but, yeah, he did score. And, you know, that's why I went Haaland captain against Luton. Man City. Especially after the two results today, we, we probably expect Man City to go on comfortably. For me, anyway, they'll comfortably win the league. And yeah, this is what Man City wanted. They're in that zone. This is where Man City has taken away from me the league. And yeah, brushed Luton aside. And yeah, I, carry, I expect Man City to carry on doing the same. So Haaland, 10 pointer, captain, 20 points. Can't really complain too much. But yeah, um, I've still got three players left to play. As I said, Petrovic, Gusto, and Palmer all at Everton. And on the bench, Kelleher, we know, didn't start. Hoyland, blank, which I wasn't surprised. You know, he's been quiet. You know, I, I don't think Hoyland's had a single shot on target in the last four matches. It's pretty poor for a striker. But you know, Man United do have underlying issues in their team. Uh, Udogi, again, conceded you know, was it three goals to... to New, or four, four goals to four Newcastle, goals. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a thrashing. Which was which was a bit mad. I mean, and, and I didn't expect Newcastle to keep a clean sheet in that game, or otherwise I would have started Dan Burn. And Dan Burn comes away with a six pointer after his clean sheet, uh, obviously against New uh, against Spurs. So, yeah, I wish I started him, but you know who would have thought Gabriel losing two 0 Van Heck again had a good fixture against Burnley, and then Gusto. We'll see what he does. Um, but all in all, pretty bad week. Uh, but I'm not giving up complete hope. I've got 43 points. And I believe it's a tiny red arrow. I think my rank was, I think my rank was 79k. Yeah. And it's now it's 80k. So it's a 1k red arrow. But I'm pretty confident I will end up on a green arrow by tomorrow night. Um, yeah. I should, but we'll have to see. So yeah, I'm not too fast as of now. It's still three of my players left to play. Um, so 1k red is sort of like a grey arrow anyway. So yeah, we'll take yeah. that on the chin and. Um, We'll see what Chelsea do on Monday. Yeah, because on life if FPL, your your safety, you're only one point below your safety mm. score, so you should get a green after Chelsea game. Yeah, because I'm expecting a minimum six six points tomorrow, I guess, from the experience points, and if they get Palmer, get the return and things. You know, we'll see. But yeah, yeah. Jordan, same to you. Obviously, you had a decent week. Uh, talk us through your eleven. Yeah, it was a su actually surprising uh, week in terms of results. I mean, 
the goalkeeper Leno, let's start off with him. I wasn't expecting a clean sheet in this London derby against West Ham, but Fulham do go on to win that game 2 0. And uh, surprisingly, Andreas Pereira scored both of the goals in that game. And often you don't really see him getting the goals. Uh, but that means that Leno does get the clean sheet. And he also made four saves in that game, which, again, because he made at least three, that's another point added on to that clean sheet, which gives him uh, nine points. So he also got a bonus, I believe, a bonus two as well from that performance. So, yeah, Leno did really well in that London derby game and not so good news for West Ham in that respect. Uh, let's move on to the defence and it gets even better because Regulon keeps his clean sheet uh, against Sheffield United. And I was hopeful uh, for it to be a clean sheet or get an attacker return, but no attacker returns for Regulon, but he does reward me with the obviously with a clean sheet and also got bonus points as well on top of that. So again, really nice performance uh, from Brentford. I think it's a big win considering mm. the last win was in game week 24 against Wolves. Since then, they've either lost or drew matches. So that's a huge boost for them uh, in terms of the bottom of the table now. They should be moderately safe from that. Uh, moving on to the next player, obviously, Brant Waite, he plays tomorrow against uh, Chelsea, so we have to see what he does in the next stream. So let's move on to Gabriel, who ends up on zero points. Like we mentioned before, he got his yellow card and also conceded two goals to Aston Villa and ended up losing that game 2-0. And yeah, that was the second shock of today's fixtures. Never thought Arsenal would lose 2-0, but the way that game was going... Aston Villa all over that. I felt like Arsenal were too passive in that game. Didn't show much threat. And yeah, it just didn't go the way Arsenal wanted it to. So yeah, massive blow for them. Uh, but moving on to the midfield, there's a lot more, say, success. Only from really one player, though, and that is Anthony Gordon, who I did transfer in uh, the previous game week. And he rewards me with a nice 17-pointer, getting two assists. With the clean sheet, scoring a goal and getting the bonus three on top of that in that massive 4 0 win over Tottenham. I thought Spurs, that's probably the worst I've seen Spurs play all season. They just couldn't play football at all. It's like they lost the ability to pass, keep the ball, or even have any tactical play throughout that game. Newcastle were literally all over them. And it could, I think 4 0 was a quite light result the way that game was going. There were so many opportunities from Isaac and Gordon and other players in Newcastle to score that I think they, they got off lightly with the 4-0. But yeah, a massive score from Gordon. And apparent, uh, well, at the moment, he is the most transferred in player uh, due to that high uh, score for this week. Uh, in terms of everyone else, though, in midfield, let's talk about Salah. Obviously, he's two points. Uh, again, I thought Liverpool, it, apart from the Atalanta game, I didn't watch that one, but that's probably the worst Premier League performance I've seen for Liverpool this season. They just looked, even though they had so many chances to score, I think my hands were on my head, even though I don't support Liverpool. As a neutral, I was literally thinking, how have they not scored any of those opportunities during that game? To, to be fair, though, I will give praise to Crystal Palace because they defended really well in that game. They blocked important, mm. important shots that Liverpool did bring them and defended really well. And unexpectedly as well <laughs> from Crystal Palace. But fair play to them uh, winning that 1-0. But yeah, Salah was pretty, I'll say, not really with it. I think he hasn't been with it since his injury. And coming back from that, it's just not been the same for him. But yeah, only two points for him. Uh, moving on to Palmer. Obviously, he plays Mike Brant Freight tomorrow. So we have to wait and see how he does against Everton at home. So let's move on to Saka, who again was an also uh, a person that never really had much involvement in that game. He had a couple of shots, but weren't really threatening. The goalkeeper parried him away and just leaves him with two points because obviously Aston Villa only scored the goals in that game. So yeah, quiet game for Saka this game week. And finally, moving on to Son, uh, which I, I suppose is not surprising to many, but he did come off in the second half very early on, only playing about 57 minutes. And yeah, it just didn't go the way Spurs wanted it to. And it was that bad, literally cost. It's hard to say his name, but the manager Spurs. Manager, 
yeah, it's, it's a tongue twister <laughs> for me to say his name. Yeah. But yeah, he, he did substitute him off. I mean, it was pretty bad the way that game was going. And I think there needs to be drastic changes, but it didn't really make a difference. It didn't change the way Spurs played. And yeah, Son yeah. only got one point from that game and nothing much else. So let's move on to the front forward line. So we've got Haaland, who scores his goal from a penalty and also assists one of the goals in that 5-1 win over Luton. And he also picks up a bonus one point as well. Uh, yeah, I kind of wish I captained him, uh, Harden. I think I should have really gone with the captaincy over him uh, instead of the play I did go with. But then again, I did want to go different and it didn't really pay off. But the way this game has gone, it hasn't affected me that much. So speaking of the captain, uh, Munez was the captain for me this week. He did blank, uh, only getting the two points for the minutes he played. No attack in returns, even though Fulham won two 0 So, but again, that that's just uh, I just wanted to go different with captaincy and make it more interesting. But mm -hmm. I think this is the last game week where I have Munez in my team. But he has been uh, very he's done very well for me since I've brought him in my team. Uh, and just on the bench, there's not really much to talk about as most of it is injury issues. But Doughty he comes away with zero points. Um, Obviously, they lost 5-1 Luton, so that does mean Doughty ends up on zero because the goal is conceded. So, yeah, that's all there is really to talk on the bench. But overall, this game week so far, I've still got two players left to play, Brantway and Palmer. But currently, I am on the green arrow. Uh, originally, I was on 60k. I have now risen up to 44k. So it's a nice 16k green arrow for me. 53 points so far this game week, and yeah, apart from uh, picking the wrong captain, it has been a very good game week for me. Brilliant. So, on a green, I'm on a like small red. Uh, again, we've got you've got two players left to play tomorrow night. I've got three, so we'll have to wait and see. In the final ranks, we'll go update you guys on the team selection video. I'm sure next Thursday. But um, that's game week 33 out of the way for now. We're gonna. Look ahead to game week 34. Uh, again, it is a big game week because obviously I'm, I am free hitting. Um, you know, I'll show you guys a current free hit draft I've made. And I'll also look ahead to Jordan's transfer plans as well as a non-free hitter. Uh, so I'll share with you guys my screen very quickly. I just made this very quickly last night. So it's probably not what it's going to look like. I just quickly made it last night. So just disclaimer. I just... Took me like five minutes, didn't even think about it really. And this is what I've gone with. So, um, let me talk you guys through my pick. So, I've gone with all double game week players, which could be risky when you consider Haaland has Brighton away in game week 34. And I've gone without Haaland, but we'll have to see if that's a, a good idea or not. I mean, in goal, I've got Pickford, he's got Forrest and Liverpool. So, two home games. And I think he is one of the keepers, standout keepers with a double. In the back three currently, I've gone with Virgil van Dijk, who's got Fulham and Everton away, two away games for Liverpool. And with the way Liverpool are playing right now, I don't see many clean sheets, at, at, if I'm being honest. I might see one maybe against Everton. I, I think Fulham will score against Liverpool. So I've got Virgil in there. That could be Trent now, because we know Trent is back from injury. If I want a bit more upside, I could go Trent, especially with Bradley now coming off injured. Bradley came off with an injury, and Klopp did say he does look quite serious. So one in. One comes back from injury, the other one go gets injured. That's just Liverpool right now. So yeah, Bradley could be out for a while, and then you know Trent for the double could be tasty. So I'll probably switch Virgil out to Trent. Uh, you've also got Muniz, Munoz in there. Sorry, Munoz, um, the Palace defender who was quite impressive today. I thought decent against Liverpool. He's got West Ham and Newcastle, two home fixtures, and I do want some Palace players in my team because the way they played against Liverpool, you know, I. I I actually do like some Palace players. I want to be different because I know a lot of non-free hitters won't have any Palace players at all in their team. So having one or two, especially when they've got two home games coming up, could be could be tasty. To complete the back line, I've got Gabriel, who's got Wolves and Chelsea at home. I could swap out Gabriel for another defender like Ben White to go different, uh, especially if Ben White has some sort of assist or attacking threat in those two fixtures. But those are tough games for Arsenal. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Arsenal did drop points in one of those games. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Moving into the midfield five, I've gone with Eze, who's got 
two home games, West Ham, Newcastle. Again, I thought he was really good against Liverpool. Obviously scored their goal, their only goal of the match. Um, so he's someone that I'm looking to include. I could go Elise as well. But at the moment, I'm, I'm siding towards Eze over Elise. But um, we'll have to see. And again, two home fixtures, West Ham, Newcastle. Uh, I think they could be quite nice picks. I've won Saka and Havertz to the Arsenal double up on the midfield. Uh, I'm not so sure would I want Saka or would I want uh, like someone like Odegaard potentially in there. At the moment, I've gone Saka Havertz. Um, I do think I prefer those two over Odegaard at the moment. Odegaard was subbed off, surprisingly. I didn't know why Arteta did that. Um, but Havertz, if I hope, you know, he plays down the middle in other nine. So I think he's a better, better up there rather than Jesus. But yeah, I've gone with the double Arsenal in midfield. I'm also going to double Liverpool in midfield with Luis Diaz and Salah as my captain as well, which we'll come on to. So Luis Diaz was subbed off. Uh, I'm not sure why, because I thought he was better than Salah today. And I thought he was better than Nunes as well. So Liverpool have two away games and they, they are tricky, Fulham and Everton away. And at the moment, I am leaning towards Luis Diaz. But we know Nunes is there. Jota is back from injury. Jota came off the bench today to play the last you know, 30 minutes. There is a bit of rotation risk there with Liverpool, but I still think Luis Diaz and Salah should start majority of those minutes. So at the moment, both of them are in. And then to, sorry, complete the attack, Cunha, who did get two goals. Um, you got two goals this weekend. He's got Arsenal at home and then Bournemouth at home. So I do like the fixtures. Um, so he's in the team at the moment. Again, um, I could swap him out because ACC first bench. I've got Mateta, who's got West Ham and Newcastle. I thought Mateta was a bit of a handful today. Should have scored. I don't know if anyone saw Allison's save from Mateta's yeah. shot. Point blank. I don't know how Allison saved that. Um, but yeah, Mateta should, really should have scored and made it 2 0 to Palace for being at that time. Uh, but it was just one of those games of crazy missed chances. Um, so Mateta could swap out for Cunha qu quite easily. I'm 50 50 on that. I mean, maybe I'm upside at Cunha, but. Cunha does have Arsenal at home uh, in that one. So it's a bit of a trickier game. And to complete the back, uh, sorry, complete the forward line, I should say, I've got Solanke in there with his double against Villa and Wolves. So two tough away games there for, for Solanke. Um, so I could even play Mateta and Cunha, but Cunha's first fixture against Arsenal isn't great. So at the moment, that's what I've gone with. And on the bench, I've got Jose Saar, Mateta, Brantway, and Zabani. Um, let us know in the comments, guys. This is my free hit team. What sort of changes you would make? Because at the moment, this is what the team looks like. I'll probably will change it. It's not locked in at all. And you know, I'm looking at Trent potentially instead of Virgil. I'm looking at Ben White instead of Gabriel. Do I want to get Nunes in? Uh, would you guys get Nunes in? Um, go to a front three, play Nunes, and then maybe drop out someone like uh, Luis Diaz. Dro drop him out. So essentially, Luis Diaz or Darwin, who would you rather go for? Let me, let me know in the chat, guys. I want to get your thoughts on the free hit. And also let us know if you're free in as well in the chat as well. Jordan, I mean, you've yeah. seen my free hit team. What sort of changes would you potentially make on this? Uh, what sort of players do you like if you were free hitting? Yeah, I was about to ask. Other than the double gaming players, apart from Harden, who has a single against Sheffield United, have you considered having any other uh, players that have single gaming fixtures just so you may just have those covered in mm. case they can outscore some of the players there yeah. that have double gaming? To be honest, I've not considered a single single game player bar Harland. Haaland's got Brighton, sorry. Man United got Sheffield. Um, so Haaland has Brighton away. Obviously, it's a, it's a good fixture. Haaland can outscore Eze quite easily, you know, if we're being honest. Um, but Haaland's the only one. I wouldn't... I'm not considering anyone else as a single game week player. Um, I like having 11 doublers. Um, you never know. I could go Haaland last minute, take out Cunha, go Haaland. Um, but I just think I've got to attack the doublers. Obviously, I am chasing. I want to go different. Haaland still isn't that Haaland that we know of last season for me. Still, I know he got a 10 pointer, but yeah, I'm going to go chase the upside. But it, it could obviously, we know the risk of not having Haaland in your team. Let's see what the comments are saying, though. Um, and then we'll get into a bit more uh, of your of your side of your comments, guys. So, Tricky Trees, evening chaps, got concert off the bench for new signing Foden. For new Foden signing, 50 points with Gusto and Palmer to play. Nice. Conta okay. getting a clean sheet against Arsenal. Uh, evening lads, 49 points. Overall rank 7K and still third in the Duo League. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. Keep it up. Yeah. Elliot says, hey lads. Uh, tricky trees is what I'm sort of stuck on. Which third uh, Liverpool player for the double? Darwin, Jotter or Diaz? I'm leaning towards Diaz. If 
I'm being honest mm. at the moment. But Jota has such high upside. But I just don't know, Jota, is he fit to start both games? I'm not sure he is. So that's what kind of yeah. sways me off Jota. He had a good chance to score today, though, as well. Yeah, should have scored. Pitch. Yeah, he should have scored that one. Mm. Should have, could have scored two, I believe. <laughs> yeah. The two all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah half, two half chances there that Jota should put in the net for them. One was an easy chance, though. One the Gakpo yeah. put it in the... And it, we should just tap yeah, it in. Yeah. Goal, yeah. Doesn't normally miss those draws. So was... But at the moment, I think Diaz, I'm leaning towards just. Uh, have Gordon and Isaac, but feels like a disappointing 48 points. Went Salah captain. Poro on for eight. Nuri for zero. When I had Shah second bench, didn't do Son to Foden. So Shah stayed benched. Yeah, uh, Shah had a, like a lucky. yeah like a 14 pointer or something, didn't he? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was 12. Uh, obviously, from mm. the goal and the clean sheet yeah. combined. And... Yeah, uh, Shaw, that's I think that's his back to back goals now for him. I'm yeah. quite surprised how attacking Shaw's been. Dan the man says went uh, Rico Lewis over Vardio. Yeah, obviously Fatali says Vardio owner the goal and assist. So congrats to went whoever went Vardio. I was looking at Vardio on my gaming thirty one draft, but I was always just worried with Champions League games and things around it. Was he gonna start? So they got high upside, but you know, it's anxiety when you look at the team news when, you, when, when you're waiting for the Man City defender to start. Uh, hi, lads. 44 points for me with triple Chelsea to play because eight Nuri free hit. Because of eight Nuri, sorry. My free hit is 99% locked in for next week. Should be fun. Let us know who you've got in your free hit draft there, Roman. Because obviously I'm on a free hit and this is what my team currently looks like on the screen. Uh, I've got 11 free hitters as well. Eze over Diaz says Thomas. Better fix just for Mateta over Cunha says Tricky Tree. So, I mean, would you play Mateta over Cunha, Jordan? Yeah, I think I would, absolutely. Uh, as much as I like Cunha and him scoring mm. two goals uh, in the last game week, or oh, well, obviously this game week, um, mm. his fixtures are difficult. Arsenal at home, not going to be easy, and born for home as well. And because you've got Solanke too, they play against each other. Normally, you don't mm. see both scoring in the same, obviously, game week each other. So, yeah, I think as a West Ham are struggling, and it's a home fixture. And uh, Newcastle as well can be iffy at times as well away. Mm, true. Yeah, I might start Mateta, but I'm not sure about starting Triple Palace though. And I know they beat Liverpool today, but I think that was their first away win since like November or something. I, I think I read somewhere. So don't know about starting Triple Palace, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm tempted by a few like Haaland, Isaac, Bruno Fernandes and Cole Palmer for the single, single game with players, says Roman. Hmm. Possibly, yeah. but who's Chelsea got? Chelsea have Arsenal. Chelsea have Arsenal, but nah, I wouldn't. Again, I personally wouldn't. It only takes a penalty. And Cole yeah. Palmer's goal. Um, Chelsea have had a lot of penalties this season. Mm -hmm. Might end up with single game week Watkins as my first sub. Yeah, look, Watkins. <laughs> I mean, for those that are taking him out, I mean, he's scored. I feel like every week since he's been back again, another what a goal from him. The, the chip finish. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, for me, I, I I don't know what people think, but for me, he's the player of the year. I know people talk about Declan Rice. You know, there's people talking about Rodri. There's people talking about you know even for Liverpool, like the likes of Van Dijk and things. I think Watkins is the player of the year. And if he doesn't win the player yeah. of the year, for me, it's just a bit. I, mean, <laughs> I think if he played for the one of the bigger teams and they were going for the league, he'd easily win it. But yeah, I don't know. For me, uh, Watkins has been unreal. He also could get the golden boot. He's in contention. There's a few others as well. Isaac's in contention as well for that, as well as obviously Harden's still top, but they're not far from him. Yeah, I've not seen the goals list. I mean, who's top scorer right now? I think it's Harden, isn't it? Still, I Har yeah, I think Harden's on 19 and Isaac and Watkins are on 70. Yeah, I'm Harden's on 20. Oh, 20 now. Oli Watkins yeah. is on 19. Then Isaac and Salah are tied on 17, as well as Solanke. So, Solanke, Salah, and Isaac all on 17. Then you got Cole Palmer on 16. You got Bowen and Son on 15. You got Phil Foden and Saka both on 14. And then you got Chris Wood on 12, I believe. Yeah, Chris Wood's got 12 goals. Damn. Yeah, in the absence of Aaron e, he's he's been a bit on a goal streak as well for not the yeah. Forest. Mm. But yeah, look, Ollie Watkins, one goal behind Haaland now, top scorer. So yeah, I think he's up there for sure in terms of like team of the season as well. Like for me, he's been the best nine of the of the, of the year. 
Uh, I suspect Liverpool will rotate heavily over the next three game weeks. Yeah, Liverpool's an interesting one because, I mean, after that game, when Liverpool lost 1-0, he thought, that's it, Liverpool out of the league. But now Arsenal have lost. Liverpool have the same amount of points as Arsenal. And they're now two behind Man City. I expect Man City to win the league, but what are Liverpool going to think now? Do you think Liverpool think it's over now or, you know, it's two points, can we still make up for it? And think, I, I don't see Liverpool winning the league now. I don't know what you think. Um, um, what do you, how much rotation do you think we'll get in the next three for Liverpool? Because Liverpool do have four games in about nine days, including the second leg of At- Atalanta. I think there'll be a bit of rotation because, like for example, that Conor Bradley injury, that just shows an example of how vulnerable Liverpool players are, and especially the ones coming back from injury like Trent and Jota. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to be very careful now managing minutes of players because you don't want these players getting injured again. And not having backups, like yeah. like we saw before, when there was a list, countless list of Liverpool injuries out. That's the worst thing that could happen now, because that yeah. will definitely ensure that Liverpool mm. won't get any more trophies for the rest of the season. Now they'll be pretty much ruled out. Mm. Yeah, we're looking at the league now. Obviously, Man City do have a two-point lead over Liverpool and Arsenal now. I mean, we both expect City to win it now. Or do you still think there's more twists and turns to come? Because no one saw this coming today. Yeah, I think there's still more twists and turns to come. I mean, most likely, uh, if Man City go to win all their games now, then yeah, they've pretty much won the title. But I think it's still early. There could be another Who twist. Who beats City, though? You're now relying on City to drop points. Who beats Man City? I mean, any team could. I mean, look at today. Watching Crystal Palace yeah. be Liverpool, no one saw that coming. Aston Villa, I mean, Arsenal, maybe. Yeah, but, I wasn't convinced with Liverpool, though. Liverpool have been, since the United games, they've been, they've been off, I think, the attack. I mean, Man City yeah. seem to sort of get into gear at, at this period of the season. I mean, if you pull up Man City's fixtures, I mean, we'll do it in a bit. We'll see what's the possibility. But, um, I mean, as a Liverpool fan right now, I think Liverpool have to go strong in that second leg. I know Roman is saying playing Bobby Clark and things. I think the league's done. So, I think Liverpool, uh, Liverpool probably have a better chance of winning 3-0 or 4-0 at Atalanta than winning the league now for me. So I would be I think Klopp may go strong on that one, but we'll we'll have to see. Um yeah, Jordan, let's pull up your boss team for game week 34. As a non-free hitter, talk yeah. us through your eleven quickly, and then also your immediate transfer plans as well. So yeah, this is gonna be my non-free hit team. So let's start with the goalkeeper Leno. Got a tough feature against Liverpool at home. Uh, got currently the back four of Regulon. He's got Luton away. Brantfrey's got a double. But not the Forest Liverpool. Gabriel, Wolves and Chelsea. And Dowie was the single game week uh, against Brentford. Midfield four. Got Gordon. He's got Crystal Palace away. Uh, Salah's double with Fulham and Everton. Palmer with the single against Arsenal. And Saka with the double against Wolves and Chelsea. And up front we've got Harlem. He's got Brighton away. And Munez. He's got the tough one against Liverpool at home. And on the bench, you've got Ariel, who's currently flagged. He might be back for that Crystal Palace away game. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Son is obviously blank game week for him, so no fixture. And Bell and Semenyo probably are going to be out uh, mm-hmm. for double game week 34. So, yeah, as a non free hitter, <laughs> I'm not full of confidence whatsoever because I've only got yeah. four double game week players in my team. Okay, so you've got four. Obviously, you've got the... You got Arsenal, double Arsenal with Saka Gabriel. You got Brantford and Salah as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got one free transfer. What are you looking at? Are you, you going to bring in another doubler, or are you just going to? What, what's your plans in in terms of transfers? Early thoughts. Well, I was thinking obviously about taking out Muniz because he has the tough one against Liverpool at home, and I don't think he'll get much out of that game. And as long as I've held on to him uh, for this long, I think I've got my fair share out of him. Mm. So he'll probably be my transfer if I just switch over. I yeah, wouldn't be there. surprised if Liverpool concede to Fulham, by the way. I think they will concede to Fulham, if anything. <laughs> yeah, they probably will. But knowing my luck, it'll probably be Munez after I take him out. <laughs> after these blank back to yeah. back. But this is... Uh, obviously, let me just... What's the money in the bank like? I've uh, got 2.6 million oh, in the bank. Decent amount of money. Yeah, it's a fair bit of money. Uh for me to bring someone in in terms of double gaming players though there isn't really much options i could go for at that price uh because if i take out munez he's cheap he's only 4.6 so he's not expensive that only leaves me 7.2 yeah you can get a couple 
I mean, the ones we've got, I mean, people like Mateta and Cunha, but obviously, as a free hit, I get to get rid of them straight after. Yeah. I mean, how long would you want to hold them? That That's the other thing. Yeah, so if I wouldn't want to hold on to these players um, long, term or short. They're pretty much like a, a one-week punt if I was yeah. going for it and not like a long term. But in that sense, I thought about one player. But this player doesn't have a double game week. Okay. So this, is, this is quite a surprise, I think, to many. And that player is going to be Isaac, if I can afford him, obviously. I don't I think you can. I can't afford Isaac, so I can't have him either. But, oh, yeah, that's... That's you can't way. afford it. He's like seven point nine, I believe. Yeah, I've only got seven point two in the bank. So yeah, I am in left a bit in the headache. I, I'm not sure who I'm going to bring in for Munez. I don't really want to replace any of the midfielders. I'm not looking at the defense either, because uh, that is, it's not like the clean sheets there really. Would you consider a minus four? No, even a minus four I wouldn't consider, especially as a non-free hitter. I mm. think taking a minus four is a pretty much a sentence of a red arrow i think unless there's yeah. a really bad game week for them but yeah it's, it's gonna be a one free transfer it just depends on who replaces munez for me let me know guys in the chat who do you think i should replace me i have 7.2 million if you, want a, if you want a doubler you're looking at cunha you're looking at mateta these type of guys i don't know what their fixtures are like after 34 but you probably wouldn't want them long term cunha or mateta no. I mean, Cunha's... It's Solanke, is... actually. I forgot about Solanke completely. Yeah, Solanke. Solanke is another one. Obviously, he had the double, who's cheap as well. Sort of cheap. Yeah. Um, I could have Nicholas Jackson, but... Yeah, whether he's I want to go, Yeah, whether I want to go there or not, though, is another question. But he does double, not in 34, but in 37. I guess not in the Forest and Brighton. And, and 35. Oh, yeah, sorry, in 35 as well. So he could be a player I could look at. It's just he's on nine yellows. So if he picks up another yellow, I believe, he misses two games. Yeah, and that's, again, another headache if it, if that does happen. But I think it's something I've got to think about again. I mean, of who to bring in, because it is going to be really important, I think, in terms of me this week. Because it's going to be really hard to get a green arrow, I think, uh, for all the free hitters. Now bringing in doubles and pretty much having 10 or nine of them in the team. It's going yeah. to be really hard for me with only four doublers. Yeah, you're going to navigate that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously there's yeah. Solanke, there's Cunha, Mateta, there's Jackson, if you want to take that risk, things like that. Um, Hoyland, I don't know, actually, but... Actually, Solanke. Uh, well, actually, I can't afford Solanke. You, can you get Solanke? Yeah, he's 7.2. So yeah, he's that's just, yeah. It's on the money. Yeah, it's on the money. If he if he rises in price, then I won't be able You'll to afford him. Yeah. So you've got to keep an eye out on Solanke's price rises because if, if you do want him. And what's his fixtures like yeah. after 34? Uh, after 34, he's got Brighton at home, then Arsenal, then Brentford, then Chelsea. It's not bad. So, yeah, not bad run of fixtures after being the hardest one out of those out of those four so yeah he could be he could be a placeholder uh, in my team for the next week okay let's take a few comments thoughts on Bert and diaz very bad defensive and does he play up front yeah i don't know if i want to take a midfield spot up with a sheffield player really if i'm being honest but it could be a nice differential. Games, Don, Emery, Masterclass. Yeah, definitely was. Yeah. I got Isaac on my normal team when I wildcarded. He's honestly above Holland for me for the next few games, says Roman. Um, yeah, and Solanke shouts for yourself. Cunha shouts as well. Not sure if I'm ill, but why am I looking at DCL, says Roman. Hit at DCL if you want to go there. Uh, he's currently injured, I believe. I think he's back. I think he got a penalty, didn't he? No, I think he's... He has a hamstring injury, I think. Yeah, he's, he's always injured. Yeah. Uh, I, I bought Jackson in gaming 30 wild card. He has not paid off the punt, but I, ho I can only hope. Got a couple of doubles coming up, FN, so let's see where he gets you. What about Dallow? Burnley, Sheffield, plus double in 37, but here's Man United defence, lol. 
Jordan, I'll let you go there. What do yeah. you think about Dallo? Yeah, there is not a single Man United player. Let me tell you, the only player who I'd bring in for that double game week for Man United, and that is Bruno Fernandes. And the only reason, and I said this to Huss as well in, in private, that the only reason I'd bring in Bruno is because he's on penalties. And mm. in the most unfortunate way and unconvincing way, you can probably see Man United getting a penalty in one of those games. And that is it. I'm not convinced that any other player in that team, yeah. even the goalkeeper, who are bringing for that double, it's only Bruno Fernandes for me. Yeah, I'm trying to... I might get Bruno in myself in game 37 for the double. I'm not ruling it out just because he's another doubler, but we'll have to see Yeah, um, with my plans. Again, that Burnley and Sheffield United games aren't going to be easy for Man United. They struggle as it is with other teams and especially with Burnley having a lot to play for. Sheffield United, not so much, but they still got pride in their performances. So, Also, yeah, just a quick question. Did Edison start? Oh, he did start. Edison, Edison did the Man City goal, he did start against Luton. So Edison's coming into my team very soon, I think. Um, just because I know he's going to play. I, I don't want to take a risk on bringing in a Man City defender knowing they're going to get benched. Because Man City do have a double coming up in 37. So Edison's probably going to be my goalie for 37 as well. So we'll have to see. Will Salah yeah. come out by 37 as well? Sorry, you were saying. I was going to say, do you trust Edison to keep a clean sheet? In the Not really. Not really. Uh, but it's just more the upside if they get clean sheets. I want to have that covered. Um, and I, I think Man City will win the league. And I know everyone keeps talking about Liverpool's fixtures and things. I think Man City's fixtures are being slipped. Man City's fixtures, they're going to win every game. Maybe not Tottenham. Maybe they might draw to Tottenham, but other, other than that, I don't see Man City dropping points. I'll let you pull up Haaland's fixtures, Jordan, yeah, on, on your sure. screen right now. And oh, yeah, let's just have a look how many clean sheets we can see for them. You know, Brighton away, I think City win that. Whether they get clean sheet, probably not. Nottingham Forest, others comfy win for City. Wolves at home, comfy for City. Pull them away, I think they'll get the job done. Spurs is the one where they could maybe drop points. West Ham at home. I just see them win every, every game, bar, bar maybe Spurs. And then you just compare that to someone like um, Liverpool, just the way the way Liverpool are playing right now. Fulham, Everton, West Ham, all in the space of a week. And they're all away from home as well. Then Spurs, Villa, Wolves. I mean, that's looking tough now. And yeah. then you've got Arsenal, Wolves, Chelsea, in between, obviously, the Bayern game as well in the Champions League. Then you got Spurs away. Bournemouth, Man United away is not going to be easy, for sure. And Everton. I, I think Arsenal's and Liverpool's fixtures are a lot, lot trickier than City's now. Yeah, they probably see it will go on to win every game, but there's visual thinking that maybe someone can stop them from doing mm -hmm. it like Aston Villa did today or... Um... Yeah. Not that mine's gone blank. <laughs> Who's the other team? Yeah, uh, Crystal Palace. Palace. Like Crystal Palace winning against Liverpool today. Unexpected. Mm. That's the only thing that could mm. hope for. Mm. Bruno Fernandez is now the only person I will look at twice because the beef now with Tenag and Garnacho all of a sudden. Yeah, that, that is yeah. strange. The Garnacho, for those that don't know, Garnacho basically liked a couple of comments on Twitter bashing, not bashing, but sort of questioning the manager. Something about why yeah. did he take Garnacho off? Garnacho liked it. So we don't know. Want to watch what happens with Garnacho? Because as an owner myself, am I going to have to take him out? Which, yeah, um, again, which will be interesting. But if I have to take Garnacho out, the one player I'm looking at, I think it's easy, is yeah. Gordon. For me, Gordon will have to come in if if Garnacho, if I hear he's not going to be playing going forward. Would the rotation matter with the UCL and FA Cup with City because the turnaround is quite fast? There will be rotation with City, as you guys know, Foden. We heard Foden's going to start. Leak said, told us he's going to start, but then we find out Foden's benched. The re Leak's got it wrong. So 100% will be rotation uh, with City. Yeah. And just you just got to take down the chin when it comes because that's what Pep does. I mean, that's how City win these leagues, in my opinion, because they're always fresh. Pep's rotation is very, very good. And he he seems to know which players to bring out and when. And he keeps them fresh. But the, compared that to Liverpool, a lot of the Liverpool players look like they're dead on their feet right now. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it seems like Man City as well don't get really get injured players as much as other teams do as well. They they really keep them fit 
especially mm. with the high intensity football. It's, I think they rotate a lot better than Liverpool and, and Arsenal yeah. as well. And, yeah, because their squad depth as well, they can easily rotate players because yeah. their quality is just as good as it is on the pitch as it is on the bench. Yeah, uh, the teams. Yeah, there's not much drop off. No, I mean, expect maybe this year there's a bit, but you know, previous years there's barely been a drop off with, with their subs. This year, yeah, it's not bad though. They're getting by, and they they looks like they're going to go on to win four in a row now. Um, but yeah, look, I want a free hit. I've got a week to consider what I want to do. Um, I'm hoping it's it's a good week in terms of the free hit. And then after that, I know a lot of managers are looking to wildcard in 35 as a strategy and then probably bench boost 37 as well. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone else has got any questions for us, do drop it in the comments below. Also, guys, if you are watching the content and you are enjoying it, make sure you do smash the like button, guys. It really helps support the channel and make sure you are Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, as it helps us out a lot. Um, so you like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Jordan, to pretty um, much this game? Really? I mean, I mean, what sort of other players would you go for in terms of a free hit? I mean, we didn't really discuss. Is there anyone that you think you should have in your free hit that I don't have, or another combination? Um, like, would you have an Odegaard over a, a Havertz or something? I mean, in terms of the doublers just looking now uh, well you pretty much have all the doubles that you'd pretty much want on the free hit that's that makes it different but the only thing would, really would you have darwin in a double over someone like a diaz probably yeah because we've seen today how many chances darwin could have had to score as much as probably diaz would have if he had those chances as well but yeah i like darwin as a pick I was probably having my free hit over Luis Diaz, uh, but probably equally. I, it's hard to decide there because there's a lot of forwards there that could obviously be rotated and come up early, like Darwin did today in the, the second mm. half. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a picky situation in terms of. But yeah, I probably prefer Darwin. Yeah, I'm leaning towards Luis Diaz right now. Um, that's coming from someone who's obviously had Darwin and won a ticket on him, but yeah. Yeah, does Eze still take pens for Palace when Elise is playing? I believe so. But let us know in the chat, guys. I think he still does, Elise. That would do my head in. I've only owned him since gaming 30, and I can't wait to sell him after the double. <laughs> yeah, I think this after this double, after double 34, I think you want to start getting rid of your Liverpool assets, personally. I mean, I'll, I, I think you can even sell Salah, possibly. Um, yeah. for wow. 35. I know what your plans are for long term. Are you going to hold Salah for 35 onwards? He's got West Ham, Spurs, Villa, Wolves. They're not easy games. So Liverpool aren't playing great right now. What is your plans with Salah long term after 35? Yeah, I'll probably just go hold on Salah for the rest of the season because even with no doubles left and hard fixtures, I think no one's really going to offload him much yeah. in my eyes. So he's probably going to be a keeper like Saka is, even though Arsenal had a drop. In the obviously points today, and I still think these players are going to be worthwhile, even if the mm. title is done for them. I still think Salah can put some goals before the season's out, yeah, and maybe continue his run of form. So, yeah, I'll probably keep him in, but maybe on the last game week, I could go wild and take him out uh, for someone completely different. At the moment, I am looking at taking Salah out in 35 or 36 when he's got Spurs, West Ham. Around that time, oh. or even I might take him out around this period after after the double. I I'm looking at taking Salah. Even Saka, I could take Saka out after the double. After this, he's got Spurs, Bournemouth, United. I'm not ruling it yeah. out for someone like a Foden, because uh, I know um, Foden will have a double coming up. I mean, Salah against Spurs could be good. It depends how Spurs look at that time because if they played the way they did against Newcastle, I think Liverpool were having for breakfast in that game and. So mm. they can go on to score like two or three in that game easily. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it goes. Obviously, big blow for the title race. Advantage City today. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still interesting. Only two points in it, which isn't insurmountable. All it takes is a Man City loss. Depending if you guys think they're going to get that loss. Let us know, guys, who you got winning it. Um, but yeah, like the stream. I think that's it for today. Uh, if I want to wrap it up. Uh, I think that's everything, really. Unless you want to discuss anything else about free hit or 
Uh, well, in terms of captaincy, oh yeah, we didn't really. I mean, yeah. I'm on Salah. Is that 100? percent Yeah, I'm pretty 100 percent on Salah. Uh, I'm not gonna sway. I know Salah's not really. Salah's been pretty poor the last three or four games. Uh, he's not looked great. But yeah, I am gonna go Salah. I think it's a double game week. I'm gonna captain a doubler, and from the rest of the other options in my team. I mean, Saka, you could go there, but he doesn't look that much better than Salah, really, right now. I mean, I know he's been a, he's been a bit better than Salah, but yeah, I think Salah, you've got to go there for me. I, I don't see any other option. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat, really, for obviously my team. In terms of double gaming players in the midfield, there's only Salah and Saka available. And I don't really want to put the Capsi on the single gaming player, in, especially as a non-free hitter. So the only, op- only really pick is either Salah or him. So mm. probably give me Salah for me too and see how that goes. He'd probably be the popular pick out of the mm. other uh, double gaming players. Yeah, I think it will be Salah will be majority captain this week. Yeah. I'd expect it. Salah uh, sorry, Saka probably just behind by by a considerable amount. I'll probably make Saka my vice. But yeah, my free hit is active, guys. Um and yeah, changes to come to this free hit there will be one or two changes i believe but that's what i'm on right now kunya or mateta again i'm not sure who i start i feel like benching kunya is not a great idea i don't know why i still feel like he can score against arsenal um but it's what's one of those mateta did look decent today against liverpool did cause a few problems could have scored himself um yeah yeah i've seen See, if I was on a free hit, I think my forward line would be probably Watkins, Isaac and Solanke. So I'd have two single game players in there up front and then have one down, Damn. which is Solanke. Just, I just think those single game players are going to outscore some of the doubles. Next there, game. there will be some that do. I mean, Isaac's got Palace in a bad fixture away. Um, who's the other one? Uh, Watkins. Watkins has... Bournemouth. Yeah. It's a good fixture at home as well. So, yeah. I mean, would it be surprised if Watkins goes and gets like two goals and outscores Cunha? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it past him. The way he's playing at the moment, I would really say he's really hard to sell. I think if he didn't have that injury, we'd probably still have him in our teams. But because he came back so quickly for me, we kind of want to bring him back in. Uh, mm. He's had three goals since then. That missed Man Man City game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just only thing about Villa, obviously, they don't have any doubles. If they did, I think a lot of us would probably have them. Um, I mean, looking at Aston Villa's fixtures as well, Bournemouth next at home. Then they got Chelsea at home, Brighton away, Liverpool at home, Palace away. So fixtures, they're not the best, but again, no doubles. And I think that is going to put people off. But if you don't mind having single game with players, Ollie Watkins is in form. Um, yeah, maybe we are Absolutely. overlooking some of them. Even Palmer, even though he's got a tough one. Uh, against you think Arsenal. he'll do well against Arsenal? No, absolutely. Only okay. only player I can think for Chelsea that would do well if they are to score against Arsenal would be him. I don't think Palmer. any other player. Do you see a potential shock result there? Because obviously, we I, mean, I had Chelsea down to do something at Arsenal, maybe get a shock result. Can you see something there? Draw? Yeah, possibly. Is it? It's a very it's a big rivalry though, Arsenal and Chelsea. So mm. a lot could happen in that game. I could see it end to end, high score one, possibly three two, going which way or the other. Damn, or that'll, be, team. that'll be that'll be crazy. Yeah, I think Arsenal have got nothing to lose now. It's either win or win or break. So they gotta go for it and Chelsea are gonna do anything they can to stop them. Yeah, it's gonna it's heating up to be a good sort of title race now. With six games to go now. So it's gonna be interesting. Eze, Ulisse or Sarabia? I think Eze for me, personally. Yeah, Eze. Ulisse did play pretty, looked quite tidy though on the board today. A couple of passes and things. But Eze, I think maybe a bit more of a goal for it with Eze. And then Ulisse is more, maybe more of an assist for it. More likely to get an yeah. assist, I think, Ulisse. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only thing that puts me off a, a Crystal Palace assets. And I think if I was on a free hit, I think I would only have one. Palace uh, player in my team just because of they don't score many goals. Yeah, 
in each game. That's the only thing that slightly well, puts me off. That, that's yeah. why I'm worried to start Eze and Mattel. Yeah. That's I mean, why I went probably... with Cunha. To have more yeah. of a spread, have a Wolves player in, in there as well. Yeah, even having a defender from Crystal Palace as well, I think uh, maybe there's no clean sheet for either mm. of those doubles for him. And yeah. Gets away with maybe three or four points. So mm -hmm. there's that as well. I'll probably only have Eze in my team playing in the midfield and that's it. Yeah. As I said, this is a first draft, guys. Um, so yeah. there will be changes to that. I'm not. It's nowhere near locked, so there will be changes that you've got to see on Thursday what the changes are. Uh, how confident are you of Trent playing the double? I'm pretty confident of, play, of him playing both. Obviously, there's always... He's just come back from injury. Didn't look great when Trent coming on. A couple of passes he sort of messed up, but Bradley's injured now, so it's either Trent or Gomez right back. Um, so, would he play both? Again, I'm not... Kind of asked you though, doesn't he? Klopp. The, the Liverpool could Klopp could play Gomez a right back. He could play Gomez right back and then play Robbo left back because he's got options now. Because Robbo uh, for Gomez has played right back a couple of times this season, so I'm not super confident. But just to be safe, I mean Virgil is the safe one. If you just want to, know, you know, he's going to play both games. Go Virgil. Uh, Allison's back as well. If you want to go Allison, you could go Allison. Um, he's back, but I, I would rather go Virgil. Just more of a goal threat, uh, but. Trent, I, th I think, again, Liverpool play Europa League on Thursday, I believe. So, if Trent starts that game and he plays like 90 minutes against Atlanta, then obviously I probably would go Virgil. Uh, but watch, wait out for that Europa League game, uh, I think. Yeah. Do you think as well, because of that Atalanta midweek fixture, do you think that affected Liverpool's performances today due to the tiredness and the lots of football in between games? With Liverpool? Premier League? Yeah, with, with, with Liverpool, I think where it's sort of gone on, like gone wrong, is I think yeah, obviously Liverpool going into all deep into four competitions, maybe that's took an edge off them. Um, I feel like Liverpool do look some of the players do look a bit like they're a bit of out of it. Like Endo was struggling, Jones sort of struggling. A lot of the players coming back from injury as well don't have the rhythm. So even Jones. Uh, Jones was one of Liverpool's best players at the start of the season. He looked off it, sort of coming back from injury. Trent coming back off injury. Jota coming back off injury. A lot of these players don't have rhythm. They've missed two or three months of football. And you're coming back into the crunch period and expecting them to perform at that level. So, yeah, I think, definitely think Liverpool going so deep into all the competition has taken a sort of toll on them. But again, if you, you want to be the best, you think you've got to play in the most of the game. So, um, it's one of those, I just think. And also, Liverpool's finishing let them down massively. And the defence has been in sort of an issue for like, Liverpool concede. I think Liverpool have conceded 22 or 21. Because Liverpool have played 32 Premier League games this season. They've conceded the first goal 21 times in those 32 games. But Liverpool have come back from behind a lot. And it just it is draining having to come back from behind all the time. I think Liverpool, that, that is a big uh, yeah. factor. I mean, they do concede first uh, way too many times, really. Yeah. Trying to get them out of trouble all the time. And I suppose after a long time as well, similar to Man United, it's not sustainable for them to yeah. unconvincingly win games over and over. Similar to Liverpool, they, they yeah. can't always have to keep coming back from losing positions to win a game because that's just added intensity yeah. and pressure on the players. You could do it a couple of times, but if you haven't constantly go behind, it does take its toll. And I think that's also another factor. I think next season they'll have to look into that as well and, and, and get that changed. Um. But yeah, I think we are going to wrap it up here, guys. It's been an hour. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate all your support. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button. We are back again on Tuesday. Transfer tips video. We haven't done one in a while, it seems like. So we will probably put a stream out for you guys Tuesday, hopefully. And Thursday, you know, transfer tips. We're back on Saturday at half 12. Deadline stream is a half one deadline, guys. We'll be locking our last teams. I'll lock in my free hit draft. Jordan will be... You know, looking at what striker to bring in. So, yeah, make sure you tune in. Should be a good one. And, yeah, enjoy your whatever left of the weekend, guys, and uh, enjoy your rest of your week ahead. Yeah, take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Hopefully you had a good game week so far, and take care.